Isaac is a game of many questions, but without a lot of answers. Today, however, we have recruited a team of one scientist to answer a very specific one. Is opening chests even worth it? What do chests contain in the average case scenario? At first, this might seem like a difficult question to answer, but with the addition of the modding API, I was able to conduct a proper analysis. Essentially, I've created a mod that allows me to do a couple of things. The first feature is that with the press of a spacebar button, I'm able to spawn a bunch of chests to the left of Isaac. As I open the chests up, they spawn consumables and the mod keeps tally of how many there are. This allows me to keep track of some rudimentary data that I'm later able to process. In game, these items and consumables are marked with some numerical IDs which is not exactly readable by humans. For that, I've mashed up a little Python script that transforms all of the IDs, variants and subtypes and gives them their proper names. The code is ugly, but if anyone is interested, I've provided it in the description below. To lay some foundations and give you an idea of the challenges I've faced throughout this journey, we've analyzed golden and stone chests, regular and spike chests, and also red chests. Red chests were a bit tricky to do with our code because as soon as you spawn many of them, odds are one of them is gonna teleport you to the devil deal and double count the consumables when you re-enter the original room. Now this could be solved programmatically of course, but I just opted to open all red chests in the devil deal itself, because as of the latest patch, a red chest can teleport you to the devil deal if you open it up in there. Now, all analysis was conducted on hard mode on a fresh save file, so some things might change as you unlock more items, but this was done as the basic fundamental analysis of different drop rates and consumable occurrences. So, with the power of computing, basic statistics and spreadsheets, we've arrived to the following conclusions. So the first two things I would like to look at here are keys and bombs. These are the two basic consumables we use to open up chests and the question I was asking myself was if it's worth to spend the key on a golden chest in hopes of getting it back. We said that the odds of that aren't that particularly good and seem to be about a quarter all the way across the board. A similar question can be posed for bombs and stone chests and we see that the odds of getting a bomb seem to be about 40% again across all chests. Now there's an interesting observation here that golden chests tend to give out a little bit more bombs and stone chests seem to give out a little bit more keys, but since this is a very limited sample size, I wouldn't want to draw any definite conclusion in this regard. It does however seem that opening up stone chests is more likely to give you your consumables back and as such should be prioritized if you're running low on gas. The next thing I'd like to point out here are breakdowns with different chests and what their average payout is. So let's first look at the most basic chests of them all. The number in the top right represents my sample size, so how many of that particular type of chests I've opened and the numbers in the bottom represent how many of each consumable you can expect to get if you open up one chest. In the case of money for example, or keys or bombs, I've actually tallied up all of the individual consumables you can get, so in the case of money, I've actually tallied up dimes, nickels and pennies to arrive at this estimate, so you can expect to get about 1.54 pennies out of each particular chest. Now, of course, you can't really get that in Isaac because decimals numbers don't exist, so you can either get one or two pennies, but this particular number says that it's about as likely to get one or two pennies. Uh, obviously, you can still get more, you can get 10 pennies, you can get zero pennies, but the average number seems to be around two pennies. I think the most surprising finding of this particular experiment is that regular chests can drop tarot cards and that the odds of getting a trinket seems to be about the same as the odds of getting a pill. Now I feel like those numbers are quite inflated and I did actually repeat the experiment and those numbers actually seem to match up. Now if you look at the case of the spike chest, you can see that the numbers are pretty much the same all across the board, the odds of getting a trinket seems still to be about the same as the odds of getting a pill and you still get can get any particular tarot card out of spike chests. Now, the money seems to be a little bit higher and I think anecdotally I've noticed more dimes in spike chests than regular chests, but this might just be my, my own perception and just my own personal bias and this number I don't think is larger, is not large enough to actually constitute a significant statistical difference, so I can't reasonably conclude that you actually get more money out of spike chests than regular chests. On the flip side, if you look at golden chests and stone chests, we can see that the numbers are pretty much the same all across the board except for one significant difference. Now, stone chests and golden chests can drop tarot cards, whereas they can't drop pills, which is just the opposite of what regular chests do. And I think that makes them a little bit better because tarot cards tend to be a little bit more useful because you know what their effect is, whereas with pills you have to use them at least once. Now, obviously, golden chests and stone chests still have that advantage of getting a, an, a particular item when you actually open them, and the odds of getting an item out of each one of them is about 20%. Now, essentially what you're doing here is you're paying a key for a bomb for that 20% of your chance of getting an item. So it's never a good idea to spend a key or a bomb 
uh, to try to get the item because the odds are re relatively low. Obviously, if you have one key, it's a better idea to go for the item room. But if you have spare keys and you can actually afford them, there's about a fifth of a chance uh, to, to actually get any particular item out of this chest. Without a doubt, the most special chest of them all is the red chest, and that's mainly due to its unique payout structure. Now, you can expect to get a full spirit heart once every three chests, and you seem to be getting pills with about the same frequency. You can get an item, or you can expect an item, about 8% of the time, and because there are 10 items total in the red chest item pool, and 5 of those are guppy items, you can expect to get a guppy item every 4% chances you open up a particular chest. Now this odd does get a little bit lower as you open up more guppy items, mainly because they are taken out of the pool, but I think a 4-3% to ratio estimate on any particular red chest is, is, is a relatively good if you're trying to gun for that guppy dream and trying to get that transformation. Now there seems to be about a 40% chance to get a troll bomb, and about 10% of those 40% chances seem to be a super troll bomb, which is not, I would say, very meaningful, but I just included it because I think it's a fun stat. Besides red chests, you can expect troll bombs to appear 1 in every 25 times and super troll bombs to appear in 1 every 100 times. And if you kind of combine that, you can expect to get a troll bomb once every 20 chests you open, which seems like a reasonable number. And another fun statistic I've decided to look at is just how likely it is to get a chest in a chest. And the odds of that happening seem to be about 1 in 100, which means there's about a 1% chance of actually opening up a small chest in any particular chest. And if you're interested for a chest in a chest in a chest, that is obviously 1 in 100 times 1 in 100, which is 1 in 10,000. So the odds of that happening are relatively low, uh, if I can say so myself. So now that I've thrown all of these numbers and stats at you, it's time to reflect back and draw some conclusions. The first interesting point I would like to make is there are no tarot cards in regular or spike chests, as well as no pills in golden or stone chests. Now the second question we wanted to answer was if it's worth opening chests up, and like with many things in life, the answer varies based on your unique circumstances, but if I had to boil it down for you, I'd say if you're running low consumables, it's a better idea to risk opening up stone chests than golden chests, as they seem to be more likely to give you your bomb back. If you can spare the health, opening up spike chests isn't really much different to opening up regular chests, otherwise I would probably advise against it. All in all, if you can spare the consumables, or if something else doesn't take precedent, like for example the item room or the devil deal, it's always a good idea to pop those suckers open, as they'll typically give you something good in return.